Amen. Would you pray with me? God, we thank you for that resurrection power today. Yes, Lord. As Leslie said earlier, it's not just about you being resurrected. It's about you being resurrected in us. Amen. And God, we Amen. praise you because we know that you are alive and well in us today. Yes, we praise you, God, for all of the things that have happened to us this week, the good. Yes. Yes, yes. And we lift up those things that weren't so good. And when you know the prayer requests that lay upon all of our hearts, but yes. right now we've come to lay all of that aside yes, and to give you a few minutes of our time yes. that we can unite our hearts, unite our thoughts, yes. and lift up the one that this day is all about. Yes, we ask these things in the name of Jesus our Christ and all things that are holy. Amen. 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 You may be seated and let's continue in worship as our reader comes. Our scripture reading this Easter morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seemed, Two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up? Then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news of all this to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles. But the apostles didn't believe a word of it, thought they were making it all up. But Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes. That's all. He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. So our reading today is probably a reading that's being used around the world today. Most Christian churches are on the same page today as to what we're talking about in worship. But well, how are we going to approach it? How are we going to talk about it? How are we going to remember this day as opposed to all the other Easter Sundays that we may remember? In our reading, we see the women coming to the tomb. Jesus' friends, he had lady friends. Yes, he had some male disciples, but he had female disciples too. And female friends, and his female friends come to the grave because they're going to anoint his body because this is part of their process. Who's there? Uh, remember a couple of Sundays ago we had Mary's alabaster box and we had the woman who had uh, washed Jesus' feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair and she had bought this expensive ointment and remember when Judas uh, complained that that money was being spent on expensive perfume and should have been given to the poor when really he was claiming that he was the poor. He was himself the poor. And Jesus said, she bought this for my burial. She bought this for my burial. So imagine that Mary is in this group of people coming up with that same oil because she's going to anoint the body of Jesus. And they get to the grave and they find the door open. The stone has been moved aside. Now I want you to get that. The door is left open. And when they get inside, they find nobody. Literally, 
nobody. Now I want you to think about that. They done had the funeral. They done had the viewing. They've come. They've, y'all not getting this, are you? Y'all, y'all know I, I, I work at Green Oaks Funeral Home. Part of the time we got several folks that work in funeral business around here. And, 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 and uh, you know, I can just imagine we've gone to pick up your loved one at your house that passed away. And now we have taken them to the funeral home and put them in the casket and got them all dressed up with the clothes you provided. And then you show up and you come and, and, and view them and say, oh, yeah, yeah, let me do a little touch to the hair here and let's do a little makeup here and let's do a little jewelry here and let's, you know, the final prep, the final inspection and all of that. Um, and, and then uh, people come. Y'all still aren't getting this, are you? You're not, are, you're not, you're not imagining this. Um, let, let's, let's do something about that. Sister Leslie, will you come up here for a minute? She's, she's our loved one that has passed away. And these are the clothes we have put on you. I'm sorry, but these are the clothes we have put on you. Would you just come stand right here? These are the clothes we have put on her. <laughs> and she, she's all beautiful. Now, now we're going to lay her out. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> We've got her all beautiful. And look, look, we got to put your hands up, sister. Because we want your hands up here. We want, your, we want to put your hands up. We want to put this beautiful pink leopard skin Bible to match. It's got to match. It's got the black and the pink in it. And we even got a flower to match. Yes, we got a little flower. We're going to put a little flower there. And we have come, we have come and, and done the final inspection. Yes, please get some pictures of this because everybody can't see behind all the lilies, but you're getting a better idea. Feel free to stand up if you need to see Sister Leslie. And we all come to the viewing. She has died, and we all come to the viewing because that's how we are. You know, we come, we come visit. We come see for ourselves. We got to see what they look like dead. I don't know why we have this custom, but because I don't want anybody seeing me dead. I, I don't want you to see me asleep, much less dead, but that's another story. But Sister Leslie does not mind us viewing her dead. So she is there with her Bible and her, and her flower and her beautiful clothes that we have put on her, and we have inspected, and she just looks gorgeous. We all come and pay our respect. She's shaking her head. Yes, she looks gorgeous. <laughs> You want to get a preview of this, Sister Lisa? You don't have to. It's all right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. This is their third anniversary, y'all. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and we all come up and we pay our respects and we say, oh, she looks just like herself. <laughs> she looks beautiful. Why, all that pain she was going through, all that stress, why, now all that stress is gone. She looks 10 years younger. Don't we say stuff like that? Yeah. Yep, yep. And I wonder who did her hair. I want to get mine like that. <laughs> Must have had Brother John come over and do her makeup because, honey, she is fierce today. <laughs> and we come over here and we see and we pay our respects to this beautiful lady, this wonderful person that we love. And we know we're going to miss her like crazy because how in the world are we going to get through praise and worship without her, right? We want her up there leading us. We want that energy that she has. We want that spirit she has. And all those times she's a prayer partner and all of those times she has prayed for us either in public or in private, we're going to miss all of that. And we know we're going to have her funeral the next day. We're going to come and do our tradition. Our tradition is not to put oils on the body like the ladies did back then in Jesus' time. But ours is to come and have the final funeral and have our last few words. So here we are, all of us, gathered here today for the funeral. And we go in. Give me a second. <laughs> we 
we go in to have the funeral and the casket's there and the clothes are exactly the way she was wearing them and the Bible's still there. There's a little smudge of lipstick on the collar. There's a little flower down there. But there's no body. Now, Brother Mike, you work in the funeral business. If they showed up and this, you were the director for this, uh, what would you be doing? Panicking. panicking. <laughs> he is the director. He is going to panic because everything looks untouched. Everything looks exactly the way it was except the body is not there. Nobody. Nobody. Right. Nobody is present. It's all empty. They go in the open door. The, the casket's open, the open door, but there's no body. How in the world? Oh, I, I can tell you at Green Oaks, one director would be calling all the other directors <laughs> and be calling all of us that are low, low end people at, and they'd be calling all the low end and the high end and anybody that's been working there. They'd be calling everybody to look on all the security cameras. They'd be looking in every casket, used and not used. They'd be looking at all, for every corner of that funeral home. They'd go to the crematorium. They'd go to the freezer. They'd go to the uh, prep room. They'd go to the makeup room. They'd go to our offices. They'd go up to the vault where all the records are kept. They'd even go outside to the dumpster. <laughs> They'd be finding, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? Wouldn't we be doing that if we worked there and we were responsible? There's no body. And look at all of these people. Look around. All of us have shown up to pay tribute and there's no body to pay tribute. He said it right. He would panic. He would panic. And what about family? Sister Lisa, what would you do? Panic. Panic. <laughs> and and, and she, she, she would. She would cut up. She would be crying and carrying on for a few minutes. And then all of a sudden, somebody would pinch her and say, you need to get with reality here. And then all of a sudden, when she got with reality, she would have everybody in the joint hopping. And she was like, we are not, you know. <laughs> what, wouldn't we? Wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Get that neck going. Say, oh, no, something's going on here. And I can hear it now. Lawsuits. <laughs> Lawsuits starting right now. Before we even find out. That's right. I'll sue you for everything you've got. That's what I'd be saying. So that's what I would assume you would say. I'd be saying somebody better be finding somebody. Somebody better be finding that body and putting it back. But here's the strange thing. We know that something's off because all the clothes are in place exactly as they were. And Sister Lisa looks a little closer and knows that something's undisturbed because she has sneaked a little note, a little private note in there and put it in the edge of that Bible and it's right where she left it. And yet the body is gone. I'm just trying to make it real for us because I don't think we always think how real. We think of all this supernatural stuff and it's, you know, we float with the fairies on Sundays, you know. <laughs> Most of us float with the fairies all the time. <laughs> There's no body. We would go the gamut of emotions and we would not know what happened and we'd want to know. We'd want to know. Uh, some of you may have heard of the, the preacher in Shreveport. I'm going to have to move these so I won't step on them. I don't want to step on Sister Lisa's, I mean uh, Sister Leslie's clothes. But I will leave them up here in case 
it's a nice visual, huh? I was, uh, you may have seen on the news the, the preacher in Shreveport this weekend that on the good, at the Good Friday service decided he would be put in a casket so he could really experience what it would be like and seal himself in until this morning. And I, some of y'all posted that, and I was like, don't y'all get any ideas. Because <laughs> this pastor, you know, I'll do a lot of things to get your attention, but I ain't going to do that. <laughs> I, I was like, well, I, I, in fact, when I posted it, I said, I hope he's got some fried chicken and potato salad in there, because if I was going to be in there, that's what would be in there, some fried chicken and potato salad, because it would have to be a picnic up in there. <laughs> But I got to thinking about it last night. I was talking to my friend Carol in North Carolina, and I said, Carol, did you see what I posted on Facebook? And she's like, yes, and we're laughing about it. She's laughing about some of y'all's comments and some other people's comments. And then she said, I said, Carol, what if they get up in the morning and they go open the casket and he ain't there? <laughs> that track suit he was wearing was there. The bones from the fried chicken's in there. <laughs> He's gone. But it's laid out exactly the way he was. She said, well, why would somebody do that? I said, maybe he's ready to escape this life and go to a different one. That's the only reason I would do such a thing. I'd have a new ID already created ahead of time, you know. I hope that he was found this morning, but if he wasn't, we'll ha have a bigger story in the news today than we had yesterday. But then after all of this, with Sister Leslie gone, we have two complete strangers all of a sudden walk through the doors and walk up to Sister Lisa, walk up to the uh, Brother Mike, the funeral director, and say, don't worry, Sister Leslie's not here. In fact, she's not even dead. She's alive. She's alive. And then walk away. Now, Sister Lisa is going to first of all want to know where Sister Leslie is. Because that's what I'd want to know. Well, where, 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 are, where is she then? Where is she? And what do you mean she's, and Brother Mike says, well, that can't be because I embalmed her myself. So I know she doesn't even have blood in her. She can't be in the same form she was when she, when she was living. And yet, we listen to this story, and we most of us have been taught it from our childhood, and we believe it. We believe it as it is, word for word. I wonder. I wonder if it was also literal. But notice what they did in our story. In our story, the women, <laughs> the women didn't find a body, so they went to find somebody. So they went to the other disciples and told them what was going on. And those somebodies didn't like what they heard, so they ran to the tomb and they found nobody too. And then they went out and told everybody what was happening because they wanted to find out if anybody had seen anything and could tell them something. How can that be that there's no body? And then they are reminded of Jesus' words and perhaps we need to be reminded of Jesus' words of how great things he did but greater things that we shall do. It's up to us to be Jesus, you see. It's up to us to be the body. We're also taught over and over, if you grew up in Sunday school, you were taught that you are the body of Christ. Amen. That we, people, living flesh, still living 2,000 years later, are the body of Christ. So if you're looking in the tomb, for the body of Christ, I hope you don't find any body because we don't need any dead bodies in the body of Christ. Right. Amen? Amen? 
We need alive, living, excited, exuberant bodies in the body of Christ. It's up to us to carry on the ministry, the work of Jesus, to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, heal the sick, reform the criminals, to seek justice where it languishes, to fight for the rights of the less than. I was moved this week by the actions of my friends and colleagues at, in Los Angeles at Founders Metropolitan Community Church. Reverend um, Alejandro Escoto, who is over the Latin ministries at, at MCC, uh, Founders MCC in Los Angeles, along with Lucia Chappelle, um, an African-American woman who has been in our denomination of, almost since its beginning. And I wanted to share with you something that she wrote that they participated in. And I, I want to read it. I started to condense it because it's a little long, but I thought, no, because when I read it, I could, I could feel it. I could, I could be there. I could be present with them. This happened this past Wednesday. Lucia wrote, it was a very good Wednesday of Holy Week, a very good day indeed. I managed to kick the stomach bug that I was afraid would keep me out of the action. Reverend Alejandro Escoto picked me up and we headed into downtown for Clue's anti-deportation prophetic action. Ooh, I like that. We were arriving late and got a bit lost. GPS doesn't know everything. <laughs> The parking lot we were directed to was full, but we found street parking right behind one of the main organizers of the event. Now, I had planned to find a way around all the walking and marching and cut to the rally and civil disobedience, but that didn't work out. So I hoofed it with my walker, come on now, all the way down, all the way, and did fine, although I think I'll know about it in a day or two. <laughs> Yes, it just wasn't right to go through the demonstration of Jesus' path without a little pain. Amen. Listen to me now. The organizers introduced me to an officer from the fire department at the gathering site who asked me all about my condition and repeatedly checked up on me to be sure I was okay. In fact, the officers were all so solicitous, I almost thought they were going to break out of Shea Lounge and carry me. <laughs> They were completely respectful with the whole group. I've always found it a little eerie demonstrating in downtown Los Angeles, like marching through a ghost town. Between the detention center and Pershing Square, there were few people on the streets, and there weren't even very many cars being held up at the intersections that were closed for us. But our little band did make an impression. Hear that? But our little band did make an impression I especially remember one man loading a truck who stopped and watched with his hat over his heart as we went by. We arrived at Pershing Square, gathered in a circle in the intersection at 6th and Olive Streets, and heard the stories of families. Listen to that now. And heard the stories of families, mostly women and their children, who face danger in Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador if they are forced to return. And danger here from the gangs whose reach extends into this country. They represent the people we are trying to protect from ICE raids and deportation. As we brought a few refugees to sit inside the circle, notice the circle, the highlight of the action for me was the foot washing ritual. Rarely have I seen a more profound expression of Jesus' message in washing the feet of the disciples. Here were people who had traveled far, walking through rough terrain to find some kind of salvation. Here were Christ's representatives, humbly caring for their needs and offering a welcome, quietly witnessing to love in the midst of so much noisy hatred, fear, and rejection in the political atmosphere. And then 19 of us got arrested. Are you ready to be arrested? And then 19 of us got arrested. We maintained the circle facing out, refused to disperse, and one by one they took us away. 
they had decided to take me last because of my walker. So they broke the circle and took the brother to my right first. Thankfully, Alex, that's Reverend Alejandro, was standing to my left. So we stood together, hand in hand, until the very end. Again, the police couldn't have been more accommodating. They took my walker, but let me keep my cane, and they didn't handcuff me so that I could use it. They put me in a very nice unmarked car with another arrestee, and off we went. <laughs> the process was smooth and friendly, and we're all supposed to in court, appear in court in a couple of months. I said to Alex while we were walking that it was better than doing the Stations of the Cross. Even more true, it was living the Stations of the Cross. Can't you just be with them in that moment? I felt like I was about to get arrested when I was reading what she wrote. I thought, that is very powerful. My sisters and brothers, Jesus is alive today. Jesus Amen. is resurrected today. Amen. Not because there's a body. There's no body of Jesus Amen. except these bodies. Amen. Look around you. That's the body. Amen. That's how Jesus is alive, and that's the only way Jesus stays alive. That's the only way Jesus lives, is if we continue to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. I find often, and I'm guilty, I was guilty for many, 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 most of my life years, I was guilty of just feeling like I had to do something to find my way to stay in the way, to stay in the teachings of Jesus because I felt like an outcast because I was. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was a passable outcast and sometimes I wasn't. From the church I'm talking about. Sometimes I find that people in our congregation have had a struggle just to get themselves back into this place and find an acceptance that they really are valuable and worthy enough to be loved by God. Amen. Here's the trick. The church needs to not keep us in that struggle. We need to get victory over that struggle so that we can, and, I, and I'm saying this to whomever is struggling today, if you're still, because some of us have passed all that now. See, I can get out there with Lucia and Alex now and be arrested and say, yes, I'm the queer pastor in town. <laughs> I'm the queer pastor in town that's openly queer. There may be some other queer pastors in town that are not openly queer. You say, I don't like that word. It means anti-establishment. So pay attention. Here's the deal. I can get out and do that because I got over myself. Amen. Because I finally realized that I had to be Jesus. This is what people look at. This is what people are going to see. If I'm going to send the message out, if I'm going to preach the message, I can't just talk about it. I got to live it out. Amen. That's why we have a letter writing team to the prisoners. Yeah. That's why we have a prayer team to pray and keep you all in victory and good health. It's why we have a food basket ministry in the other room. As small a church as we are, as few in number, did you notice what Lucia said? Our little band made an impression. Our little band made an impression. And I'm going to tell you what. You can go all over Baton Rouge. You can go all over any, well, go all over the world. And you will find right here in this church, right here at 7747 Tom Drive, one of the most diverse groups of people Amen. on Amen. the face of the earth. Amen. We're not the white church. We're not the black church. We're not the Asian ministry and the Hispanic ministry. We are the body of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
Jesus is only still alive if we continue to be Jesus to the world. Nobody becomes somebody when we get in a relationship with God. Nobody becomes everybody when we love our neighbors as ourselves. I want to close with this reading that I, I was looking at yesterday, Reverend Neil Thomas, who is now, he was my, my pastor and my boss when I worked in Los Angeles, but now is at Cathedral of Hope in Dallas. And he had posted this yesterday, and I, I wanted to share just a little bit of it. There was a much longer reading, but I want to share just the last part of this. It's from um, one of the activists in the GLBT community there in Dallas, who is a believer, Hardy Haberman. He says this, So this Easter, as I celebrate the resurrection of Christ, it is not a literal resurrection, but one far more profound. It is the words of Jesus living in me every day. The words of Jesus alive again in all of us who choose to embrace them. I am reminded that at Passover, observant Jews in the Seder by opening the door, there's that door again, by opening the door for Elijah who was to bring about the Messianic age. It seems no coincidence that at the end of the Easter story is at the open door of the tomb, an open door through which Jesus arrives to coax us to bring about the same messianic age, an age of peace and justice and love forever. Amen. Amen. If we are the body of Christ, how do we show that? How do we demonstrate that? to ourselves and to others. We have many ways of doing that. The way we conduct ourselves, the things that we do in our daily lives, the way that we treat people. A couple of those ways that we do it as a congregation here at MCC, that little band to make an effort, to make a difference in our community. One of the ways that we do that is by the many things we do here at the church and or out in the community the activities or organizations that we're involved with, the things that we simply do for other people, whether it be taking to doctor's appointments or or doing laundry or doing all sorts of other things that we may do. We like to keep track of that a little bit, not individually, but collectively, just just to help demonstrate the impact that we, our small band, have in our community. That's why we encourage everyone to use these little uh, kind of time check forms that we have to just indicate what you've done like during the past week or if you had didn't turn one in last week what you've done over the last couple of weeks or the past month just so that we can keep track of how much time and effort we've actually done in the community another way of course is through our offerings through the financial contributions that we give back to God some of what he's given to us so that we may continue to operate as a beacon of light in our community would you pray with me Dear God, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate your resurrection, to celebrate the fact that you're alive, to celebrate the fact that you are alive in us and that we are the hands and feet and mouths to let people know about you and about what all you can offer, what all you have given to us and what we can achieve through your mission. We ask that you would bless this offering and make us the blessing in your service, both individually and collectively, that you would have us to be. In your name we pray. Amen. My sisters and brothers, it comes time for us to come to the table of God, to come to this place where we can once again renew ourselves, remind ourselves that we are the living body of Jesus. On the night Jesus was to be taken, he was having a meal with his disciples. He took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, This is the bread of life, not death, life 
take and eat and let this bring sustenance. Let this bring nurture. Let this bring new life to you. Likewise, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine and he passed it to everyone in the room. Notice it was to everyone. And he said, this is the cup of forgiveness. This is the cup. When you drink of this, you remember me and you remember this, that your sins are forgiven. Those things that you did that you shouldn't have done are forgiven. Those things that you didn't do that you should have done are forgiven. My sisters and brothers at Metropolitan Community Churches all around the world, we serve in open communion. That means you do not have to be a member of this church or any other church to come to the table. When you come forward, we take the bread, dip it in the non-fermented grape juice and place it on your tongue. Or if you so choose, cup your hands and we will place it in your hands and you may serve yourself. You may come alone. You may come with your spouse, your significant other or others, your biological family, your chosen family. Just know that you are welcome at the table. The only thing we do ask is that you come as the ushers direct you. Also note there will be prayer partners on either side of the dais here for you if you have a special need. Would the acolytes and servers please come forward? Restaurant. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this time we've had together. Thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for what it means to each one of us. And thank you because not only did you come, not only did they find nobody, but God, now we can see everybody. Everybody that's your body. and Help us to love our neighbor as ourselves, God, because that's the only way we're going to keep you alive as we walk away from this place. Help us as we go about our day. Bless us in our lunch. Bless the food to the nourishment of our bodies. Now, bodies to your service. Bless all the requests that were given in. And God, remember our praises. And as we leave here today, we leave with a praise on our lips. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. In the name of Jesus, our Christ, and all things that are holy. And the church said, Amen. 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 Shake hands and be friendly.